All right, guys, I'm George, or known as SLC Tech on HVACTalk.com, and today we are going to learn how to connect the Linux, any Linux board, to our laptop to allow us to communicate with the Linux board in order to allow us to easily program, set up, and check all the parameters, check faults, and uh, show up on site to a uh, system and to uh, plug and play easily instead of having to screw around with these buttons on the Prodigy or to screw around with the single button and dip switches on the older IMC boards. This is the Prodigy board. This is the middle boy. The earlier the earlier uh, IMCs were just a green board. They didn't have any plastic face. They didn't have a scrolling marquee. Simply put, they just had dip switches and uh, one button, one button uh, control mechanism in order to scroll through all the uh, everything you can do. It's so complicated. It takes forever. You're on a hot roof. You're in the middle of a snowstorm. It's just a pain in the ass to work with these. So what you need is to be able to connect the device IMC to the laptop. On Prodigy and the new Prodigy 2.0, which would be a black version, it's fairly simple. You have a high-speed printer port or AB high-speed USB port and you can connect that directly to the USB of your laptop and they connect. However, on your earlier boards, you did not have the high-speed port. You just had an RJ11 or RS-232 phone jack port. In order to connect to those early boards, you need a particular part. That part is called the, the L-Connection PC Interface. Well, this is the kit. It's kit number 96L78. What's included in this kit, and I'm hearing these now are about 112 bucks. Recently, someone told me online if you could find it. Uh, my original cost with the software is about 600 bucks. But in the kit, it only comes with two items originally. It comes with a, your phone cord that allows you to plug into the device here and to plug into your PC interface right there. Now, the issue is that you have a 9 pin serial output on your on your interface. 99% of your new laptops do not have a 9 pin serial input. So the key is how do you connect your 9 pin output to your laptop? That requires an aftermarket converter. That aftermarket converter is a 9 pin serial to USB converter. Uh, this one I got back in the days at Radio Shack, probably in 2009-2007 period. And it works great, except it doesn't like to work on anything over Windows 7, so Windows 8, 10, the driver doesn't work for this, so I run Windows 7. Learn the hard way. Simply put, you're going to go ahead, connect your phone jack, and this will work on your Prodigies too, just so you know. You don't have to use your AB port to USB, even though it's simpler on these. Go ahead and plug in your phone jack into that. Plug your phone jack. I'm going to have to put down my phone for a quick second so don't get too confused. Plug that into... Plug it into there. Take my USB, plug it into my laptop, and finally plug it into the 9-pin serial ports. Going to go ahead and connect them. Boom. Done like that simply it. You do have to have your driver running. It should automatically recognize that you're plugged in when you hear that little doot -doot on your laptop and this starts to communicate. Next key is the software and we'll get into that in a second. So I'm going to go ahead and pause frame this and we'll be right back. It doesn't want to pause frame because I got cold film. Alrighty, before we move on to the, the actual software, just want to talk a little bit, one more thing about these, uh, the importance of having the L-Connect PC interface. It deals with this terminal here. This is your S-Bus or your system bus connection. We talked about the phone jack, but the, what the S-Bus has, if you notice, I'm just going to keep this really basic, it has your plus and minus. Uh, terminals here. These plus and minus terminals, you can run two wires. Usually you want to run shielded, but if we're just doing, you know, just connecting temporarily two or three feet of wire, 
we can connect to any one of the building components that Linux offers. Whether or not we're walking, going into the Prodigy, we have our S plus terminal here, you know, this plus or minus. We could just plug those two wires into there, two wires to our PC converter. We don't, we do not have to use the phone jack or the AB terminal. We just go right to our converter to our laptop. This could also be used on your old IMC boards. Let's pull one up here real quick. If you notice here on the old IMC board, this is the expansion slots you would see up on top. There's your push button. If you notice here, there's where we plug in our phone jack. But next to the phone jack, again, our S bus, plus and minus. So there we can have an optional backup way of connecting to the IMC board, the old IMC boards. The importance of having that converter too is for, let's pull up the, the zone sensors. The zone sensors throughout the building also have S bus connections. So we have the ability not just to plug into a board, but we could plug right into a zone sensor in order to make the internal programming needs of a particular zone sensor in a building. Some buildings have one, some buildings can have up to 30, 40, 100 of these. Also, we can connect into the Linux network control boards, where if you have multiple rooftop units all going to a network control board, we can plug directly into that, utilizing again our S bus connections. And in some cases, buildings are controlled by a building control board that controls their lights, uh, exhaust fans, makeup air. We can plug into that in order to control the binary outputs and test those if needed. So again, this is not just used to get into the old IMC boards to program those or to check out those. This is used to get into other major components if you're dealing a lot with Linux controls, buildings that are utilizing Linux controls, which there's quite a few out there. Uh, a lot of your gold gyms, uh, Walmarts, they all utilize this stuff. Of course, they're monitored by Novar, but we all know Novar, well, yeah, good luck with Irish tech support. I'm not saying they're, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Alrighty, we'll move on to the software now. Alrighty, we're going to go ahead and move on to software, which is bumped into my laptop. We are plugged into that uh, test project board I have hanging in the garage. So, get rid of this screen here. First thing we got to do is... Uh, you need to get the linuxcommercial.com, go to support, go to software. Under software, we got unit control software. Now under unit control software, you're going to have two software programs. You're going to have compatible with Prodigy, and you're going to have compatible, compatible with Prodigy 2.0. This right here, the UC212 is your main software. This does everything. Download this first. This little program here, that just takes care of the blackboards. That's the newest of the Prodigy. But this is the main program you need to download. Once this is downloaded, come over here, and we're going to go ahead and open that program, L Connect Software. And as the L Connect Software comes up, our first screen is going to show two items, manuals and the actual software itself. Under manuals, it gives us all our manuals, everything we need in order to pull up real quick if we're on site to read up on installation and or service. The next is our control. We click on that and if we're connected properly, it's searching right now to see what COM ports are available and if there is a device attached. Once it senses that, it's going to go ahead and pull up our options. Now, if you notice, this is the screen that comes up first. Very important. L Connect Network, single IMC, or single comfort sensor. If you're connected to the L Connect Network, this is where you need your converter. You're going to go right to the main Linux network control and plug into the plus and minus, and you would use this. 99% of the time, you're using this. You are walking up to a single IMC or integrate or module control board, and you're plugging into it. Single comfort sensor. Again, that's where I just barely talked about the, the converter. You can plug into a single zone sensor and do adjustments there. But this is what you want to click on. You notice it's going to pull up, connect with what? Pulls up your different comms. Now, it's right now, it's already sensed that comm 8 is connected to something. We're going to go ahead now and hit connect. Down below, it's thinking. It's connecting to the network. 
the first thing it's going to pull up is a list of all the components that are either daisy changed or connected to in incorporation with the unit you are currently attached to. In this case, we're just attached to one item. We're just going to click on that one item. And if you notice here too, it's going to give you a scroll list. You'll see a scroll list here that if you have, if again, if you have uh, multiple units in daisy chain, you'd see them all here. So quickly put, we're looking at the unit. This is our status, what the unit's doing. Talks about two stages off, our high pressure switch, low pressure switch, free stats. Again, in heating, it talks about our gas valve situation, our primary, secondaries. In the errors, we can click on errors. What's going to do is pull up all our fault conditions. Under fault conditions, we can see what the current error is. Of course, it's not attached to anything, so it's going to be kicking some errors out. Uh, in this case, high pressure switch, because there's no high pressure switch attached. Uh, we could clear the errors. Under equipment configuration, this just tells us how it's configured. This is one of the things we can double check real quick and make sure everything's set up as it should be. Should we have a two stage thermostat, the main board, expansion boards attached, number of compressors, number of fans, all the different things going on that runs this particular unit. If we have an economizer attached, there will be an economizer attachments. Again, a certain type of gas valves and BFDs. And there's our ecto parameters. Right now, it's downloading the ecto parameters in this particular board. And uh, once it's downloaded, it's going to tell us everything that's going on. Now we can move to different sections of the ecto parameters. The most important one is block 6. This one right here, 6.01. We're looking at how this unit is told to run. Is it ran by a thermostat or a zone sensor? How we could change that is by moving through here. This is how things are done. So basically, if we want to run a zone sensor, we move this to 2. Before we do anything else, we want to upload. And if we have multiple units, we can select them all, but just this one, we're going to upload. And what it's doing is going to upload that particular ecto parameter to the, that board to say, hey, look, we're no longer running a thermostat, but a zone sensor. You run into this a lot. So then, if you have a unit that's uh, running on a zone sensor, but you want a thermostat, you now you know you need to go into 6.01 and make that change. Simple as that. That's how you will go through ecto parameters. Next would be test. So here we are in test mode. Now in test mode what it's going to do is basically as soon as you enter test and if your system is doing anything running at the time you're plugged in, it's going to shut the entire system down. What allows you to do now is once we're in test mode, we have the option of acting like a thermostat or checking output test. What output test is, we can go ahead and force on a condenser fan. That would be fan 1. You'd see the condenser fan come on. We could shut off the condenser fan. If you notice down here, it's going to say off. Condenser fan number 2. Does that run? It's going to think for a second, and it'll run that. We can run the blower. We can run the service output. Now, service output would be your L terminal or any type of alarm output. We can run that. Again, we can go ahead and play with different items as running a compressor, running another compressor. In thermostat test mode, you can act like a thermostat. And it'll protect you. You can say, I want to run Y1. If you notice down here, it says unit is ready to be tested. But when we hit Y1, G input must be turned off first. We hit G. That's going to turn on our blower, hit Y1. Delays are going to operate just as they would. So you're going to have a five minute delay. They hit clear delay, and boom, our cooling comes on. Y2, clear delay, boom. So that's a quick reference to what, you know, how to check to run these things as if you were a thermostat to make sure everything's working fine. Smoke, we can just check the smoke terminals. So there we can turn smoke on and force it on. As you notice, everything shuts off. So this is the way to get in and run these systems. And we go back to our error mode. And again, we can just make sure everything's good. You can exit out back to this screen. Again, we can exit out again. And that just closes everything out. The system reboots and resets. The key to remember 
is whenever you change an ectoparameter is to go down to the upload upload the ectoparameter and then once done it will save it you can change multiple ectos and then upload them all at one time if you don't hit the upload button and wait you've done nothing so remember change ecto upload the ecto this is for more experienced people you can really hurt these units by uh, choosing to run ectos I hope this software educational thing helps you learn how to run these systems. Again, this is Salt Lake City Tech. SLC Tech with HVAC Talk. Thanks for your time.